the big banks. They make billions of dollars in profits, but how? It must be complicated, something to do with graphs, important looking men in suits shaking hands with other men in suits. Michael Pascoe's smart, he might know. But if you want to know how the big banks really make a lot of that money, it's this. Switch your mortgage now to get our low rate of 3.74%. We should change over to them. No, I can't be bothered. Can't you see I'm reading? One of the main reasons the major banks are so profitable is because hundreds of thousands of us stick with them for our mortgages, even though there are cheaper options available. In fact, our laziness has helped make the big four banks in Australia some of the most profitable in the world. Over 80% of residential mortgages are with the big four banks, even though they have consistently higher interest rates and worse rated customer service. This misguided mortgage loyalty could be costing us up to $9.9 .9 billion in unnecessary interest repayments. $9.9 .9 billion? I can't afford that. It's for the whole of Australia. Whatever. And the problem's not our lack of options. There's credit unions and building societies, non-bank lenders, independent banks, international banks, rich parents, and even a few institutions that are actually owned by the big banks that sometimes offer lower rates. There's an incredible range of products that very few of us use. We say we hate the big banks, but we won't leave them. It's one of those great Australian mysteries like Harold Holt's disappearance or Eddie Maguire's career. Many of us have a mortgage with the same bank where we got our first savings account as kids, which is kind of like leaving the most important decisions of your life up to your 10-year-old self. I pronounce you husband and wife. You may now kiss Superman. <laughs> so why don't we switch mortgages more often? Changing is so much hassle. Sure, there's a little bit of paperwork. You'll have to provide things like tax returns and... Well, what about all my scheduled payments? Your new lender can help you with that. Just ask for a switch of regular payments form. Then they can either automatically switch your payments for the last 13 months or send you a list so you can decide which payments you want to switch. Although they can't automatically switch BPAY or credit card payments. Are we still subscribed to Jamster Mobile? Uh, no. Anyway, the fees are still too high. Weirdly enough, saving money can seem expensive at first. And while exit fees are banned on all new loans, you could be charged a break fee if you're on a fixed interest loan. You could even be charged a fee for settling your previous loan. And most new loans do come with an establishing fee of a few hundred dollars. These fees might seem like a bit of money at first until you realise that sticking with an expensive loan can cost you $85,000 more over the life of the loan. You can figure out exactly how much you'll save by switching by heading to the ASIC mortgage calculator. 65 grand! That's like working a whole extra year just for your bank manager. Ah, enjoying your first day? Yes, sir. Only 364 to go. Well, remember, it is a leap year. Still, better than paying that $1,450 on switching fees. Great. Well, let me just wipe my hands with a towel that represents your dreams. Running out of excuses yet? Well, it's just so hard to compare. Firstly, those are pizza menus. Secondly, there's a thing called the comparison rate. It's most of the fees and costs of an average loan expressed in a single figure. Mortgage providers have to show them by law. A good rule of thumb, whenever you see an ad for a home loan, pay attention to the highest number on that ad. Chances are that's the comparison rate. You can also get something called the key fact sheet, which has all the info you need, including the comparison rate. But note, the credit provider doesn't have to give it to you unless you ask for it. Mm, this home loan has anchovies. There's another reason we stick with the big banks. We tend to think that they're safer and that we'll be better protected if something goes wrong. It's easy to walk into a big bank with their big building and their big logo, with their big lobby and their big pot plants, and think that that somehow makes them more reliable. I mean, they're so rich, they can afford to buy fancy couches that no one ever sits in. But as Michael Pascoe explains, that peace of mind is a piece of... Well, it's not true. When people keep their mortgage with a big bank, they're effectively paying a premium for the brand. I'm having trouble believing you. Could you say in a bigger lobby? That's better. People might think a bigger bank is safer than smaller banks, credit unions and building societies, but the reality is they all have the same level of government supervision by the same watchdog. And they all have the same level of government guarantee on deposits. Go on, go on. Yeah. 
with mortgages, the security of the lender matters even less. On the rare occasion something might happen, another lender will take over your loan. And if you don't like the conditions, you can refinance with whoever you like. Mm, yes, yeah, so true. If you're up to date with your loan repayments, you can't lose your home no matter who your mortgage is with. When some non-bank lenders did get into trouble during the GFC, no one lost their houses because of it. Remember, you're the one who owes the money. The lender should be worried about your financial health, not you about theirs. Great, but what if people want a better rate but still want the couches and pot plants of a major bank? It's normally enough just to threaten to leave to get a better offer. I told my bank I was going to move to a credit union with a much better rate. They immediately improved their offer and then they improved it again when I was still going to move. I came out of it much better off without having to pay a fee or even fill out a form. Well, will you at least do that? Yeah, no, I will, right after I finish reading this. Oh, so the government's banned exit fees. They've made it so you can get comparison rates and fact sheets, and banks will even transfer over your regular payments, all so we can shop around for our mortgages. Yet almost nothing seems to have pried us away from the major banks. The only thing that worked for a while was in the mid-2000s, when non-bank lenders expanded their share on the back of heavy advertising. Remember this? With Rams, you still get a discounted rate even with no full financials. Just call 13 Rams. Is this what you want? Fine. Honey, did you hear something? Why are you sticking with the big banks when you could switch and save thousands? Wake up, sheeple, you're being fleeced. Stop. They won't believe you unless you've got one of these. Look, there are much cheaper options than the major banks. Check any of the comparison sites. And if you do want to stay with the majors, remember there's a big difference between their advertised headline rate and what they'll actually lend for if you push them. And what you can save by moving from an average loan to a low cost one, you can buy your own pot plants and couches and executive desks. He's got a pot plant, so it must be true. I'm going to get started on that right away.